Hello and welcome to Tea Time Roundup on Plus TV Africa where the big stories live. Here I break down for you the fun packed entertainment and celebrity gist that made it to Tea Time this week. So please stay tuned and stick with your girl, Ifelmai. You don't want to miss this, trust me. Adele makes the news for being the most recently accused white lady of quote unquote cultural appropriation. And this time is of a minority culture, the Jamaican culture to be specific. Africans have never really had a problem with this, as far as I've noticed. But I, for one, understand the struggle is quite different for blacks in diaspora. Um, and, I, and I know it's hard to understand, but please look out for that conversation and let me know your thoughts. Moving on, we also have the world is grieving on the loss of Chadwick Boseman. As you can see, I'm still in my black, so I'm with them on that. But especially his hometown residents who are calling for the replacement of the Confederate monument with his statue. What do you think about that? I think it would bang, obviously. But I doubt the request will be granted. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Tyler Perry is not here to play games, as he, he just made himself a seat at the billionaire's table. No, I didn't say millionaire. No, I said billionaire's table. And guys, I am psyched for this one. Let me not talk too much and just go and bag my own too as well. Moving on, we had a studio guest in the building who blessed us with a little something, something, like I always say. And that's none other than Super Woozy. And before I let you go, let me just, let me just mention that this man is an absolute vibe. Enjoy. Hmm. First, of, first of all, when people, when people say Africans are not complaining, okay, well, I mean, if you're talking about race, yes, you can call Jamaicans Africans, but if you're talking about location, they're not in Africa, and I think a lot of people mix that up as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting, though, every time I see, I think I've been privileged enough to understand the realities of both parties, Africans living in Africa and Africans living abroad, so I'm always going to be <clears throat> of that awareness and use that every time I have this conversation. It to be on... It's not, it's not unexpected. It's actually that three now, actually. It's not just two. Africans living in Africa, Africans living abroad, and black Americans. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually. <laughs> so um, I think it's, it's not surprising anymore when Africans living in Africa are not empathetic or even understand or take seriously the, the whole fuss about cultural appropriation. Mm -hmm. We're in a place where we are very appreciated for how we look with our gili and most of the fanciest places that nobody is, you know. I was going to swear, but no one is rubbish talking about our outfits and stuff. But if you take it abroad, it is very uncomfortable when you see that a black person would wear a Bantu note. And let's just, let's just use Adele's um, outfit, for example. A black person would wear this same outfit. And you see a lot of media platforms saying, this is ghetto, this is tacky, this is ugly, this is gross, it's unacceptable, your hair needs to be tamed, blah, blah, blah. But when a white woman does the same thing, then you tag it and, and say, oh, it's beautiful, gorgeous, oh, Afri appreciating the culture, whatever. An African would not understand that reality. So it might look like people are exaggerating. But for, if you're living from that reality, you would react that way. South Africa, I think you're losing me in this conversation now. So how exactly did um, Adele culturally appropriate um, the German style? misappropriate. Okay, so <laughs> I think the, the problem with cultural appropriation in general, like, it's not really about the person who's doing it. It's, it's a bigger picture, right? So it isn't about the fact that a woman is wearing, a white woman is wearing African culture. It is that there is a an unfair balance in how we are represented when another person of color does it, okay? So Adele might honestly have, an, have a personal re, um, relationship with the Jamaican culture and isn't necessarily using the intention to um, uh, exploit that culture. But the point is that this, today's society, there's still an unfair balance. So it's not really about Adele. It is more hmm. about the, the, the scope of it. It might be draining for each other conversation. Well, but at least it's not draining. the reality. It's still not, it's still not hitting. So I followed this conversation online. I didn't even know we were going to talk about it. It happened um, late yesterday, right? Or I think mid yesterday. Mm. And um, I mean, at first when I saw the picture, I was already looking at, at talking about how she has really gotten a, the nice body she wants. I mean, uh, Everybody was looking at the angle and then I opened the comment session. Of course, people were talking about how she, she has really gotten the snatched waist and all. Mm. And then I saw the cultural appropriation thing and then I was I'm confused. And I saw people talking about um, how Jamaicans feel. And then Jamaican actually came out, came out. to say, we are fine with her wearing this. Okay, so if you're really going to talk about cultural appropriation yeah, yeah, Jamaica doesn't and the have that balance, problem, but okay. they don't have the problem. So why is it exactly a cultural appropriation thing? If they feel that there is no problem in it, uh, we, and okay. why can because we? The country, the, why can we look it's not as about white the country, as we want to? It's not about, but when these people okay, can I looks, ask you guys? Do okay. you not understand that there is an unfairness in how 
black culture is represented when it is worn by black people in America. For I example. agree that there is an okay, unfairness. The, However, if we have gotten to the point whereby whatever anybody wears has to come under scrutiny, then how exactly is this word going to look like in the next 20 years? Does she misrepresent? My question to you is, mm. does she misrepresent the Jamaican culture? Misrepresent? Any? I mean, misappropriate, sorry, the Jamaican well, culture. Well, it's only her intentions, but from this picture to me, no. But it's like, like I said, it's not about the picture. Well, I think that a lot of people should take It's about cues. this picture the right fact now. That this the conversation world, is about this picture. Fact, if, fact, you, fact, if you cannot fact, understand the ideology behind it, it would be hard to have this conversation. Look, the fact that a lot of people want... Do you know that we can, we, we can be taken... We can be dragged for cultural appropriation all the time as well for copying a lot well, of Western... Well, minorities can't really be dragged for cultural appropriation. Yeah, that's, aside from that, but that's what it's I'm saying. But, and then we can't even say Jamaicans right now, they're not coming out to say it. I even saw somebody that said, we even want Adele to drop a low pan the other side. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Like, people want to see stuff like that. They want people to actually take... Love our culture for what it you see, is. The so thing I don't is we see. We are proud of our culture. It's not about that. That's why I, I, I think I was having a conversation. But with you just Sally. don't want a white person to love. No, it is not about that. I feel that is racist as well. You need to understand where these people are coming from. Okay, African. That's what I was, I was telling Sally that has been on the show before on Twitter. Mm -hmm. It isn't about that. Africans don't have that problem. If anything, we appreciate when our culture is being put on platforms like that because mm -hmm. we are proud of it. We are. People are talking, when it, most of the time when you talk about cultural appropriation, you are pointing out the unfairness in how it is accepted. A good example, if you want to move away from Adele's story, is Kim Kardashian. When, she, when, when um, what's it called, Brandy was younger and all those people, when we were watching TV, if you had cornrows on, it was disgusting. It was on a time where you couldn't go for interviews like that in America. Kim Kardashian wore um, the braids and it was all of a sudden called Kim Kardashian braids or whatever. That is cultural appropriation. So it is not culturally appropriate when a higher race does... I um, represent mm -hmm. my culture. Minority, That's the problem. Yeah. So it's not like as if no, there's anything wrong with Adele so supposed, wearing bantu yeah. knots mm -hmm. or having Jamaican but the outfit. Being represented, no, yeah? it is that there is still an unfairness. So we're using that. Using so the fact that there's an unfairness, are we supposed white to focus on an Adele or focus on the media? Yeah, it's focus who, on the media. And this well, the conversation is usually not focusing on the media. It's usually focusing on the person, the person who it. is we're always appreciating looking at whatever it like, culture it and is. And someone thinks all pop stars have a problem. Because they, they feel like they're the ones may, um, culturally appropriating different cultures and stuff. And I don't see any sense in that. I think this conversation is, is, is very broad. It's very ambiguous. And it's and also about context, where it is yeah. happening. Yes, yeah, yeah, so of course. Not, it's but, it's and then we need reality. to focus on the context. Okay, maybe when we're talking about Beyonce, you know, you could see some sense in that. That one was proper heavy that. cultural appropriation because she's making profit from it. And mm. that is also arguable. Mm. A lot of people will argue with you as well. Mm. But in Adele's case, that is the normal dress code for... Nothing hill carnival. It's nothing new. That's mm. what people nothing wear. Hill Black. carnival is nothing new. Why you finish rhyming? Let's go on a break. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. And I just think um, a lot of people need to slow down, calm down. Like <sighs> life is not. I, I as think it's to be unfair to just dismiss their people. their ills just like that. For me personally, it's no, we're not because it's not, because it's not your reality. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Because calm your reality down. doesn't mean that. That week, Bosman's hometown residents call for replacement of Confederate monuments with his statue. Um, they launched a petition on chain.org to salute the hero. The petition organizers say the initiative is not political and they do not want the Confederate monuments destroyed, but relocated um, to the Anderson County Museum. Fair enough, but it's sad. I mean, it is true that it's not political and most of the... Um the moment, uh, monuments that they have usually are. But I think they can still do something for him like that. It's not every single monument that you find in the whole of America it, that is political. There's one about the girl, child. I don't know if you saw that campaign. It was really huge where they're putting each um, a girl running or something in every state, a girl, child. So I think something like that, maybe not that huge that is, you know, um, political in that sense can be given to them. I think he deserves that, definitely. Especially because, um, what's it called? He has also sort of like a political um, influence in terms of the black initiative of having been the first black superhero there was. So I guess you can say that it's, it's, it's worth asking for. It's not just completely fictional. Um, so in regards to that, but I think the response was very well thought of and it wasn't offensive. And I, you can say that it was worth, like, you know, the point that they're trying to raise and everything. So it is what it is.
I still think um, he deserves um, to be given the monument because what is there already he doesn't even stand for anything good. It reminds people of slavery because um, Confederate statue and all of that is white supremacy, how white people are superior to black people and all of that. So Should that is a... Go to Belgium? What? Be, exactly. Be, and then they said that where the where the Confederate flag is in his hometown. I mean, I said the Confederate flag, the com, um, the statue, yeah, is, yeah. the monument is in his hometown. That you can't miss it. You can't go anywhere without seeing it. You understand? So that's like a constant reminder mm. that we fought past this that battle. Want to There's yeah. this past that we, we you know we all we, there was a time we wanted to talk about a story where they wanted to take it down somewhere as mm, well. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Down. Yeah, they're taking quite a bit down. So I'm in support of it. It's not about Chadwick now. It's not about sentiments. It's so about, you're just interested, yeah, interested in, in taking, taking out anything it down. because I, 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 I can okay. remember I can remember even in Africa it counts. The first music video I did when I was still into. <laughs> when I was well, why are you laughing at yourself <laughs> now? Because I was you, you know, why are you going to laugh yeah. or do you pass that laugh? laugh. Well, okay. My first music video, uh -huh. I wore this user's jacket that Aww. had the Confederate Give flag on it. Mm. And then when I took Mystify. it to... Yeah. yeah. Oh. And when I took it to TV stations for them to play my video, they were like, sorry, because of the Confederate flag, you have to go and blow it out. And mm. which is why if you go on YouTube to go and watch the original video, ha. you see that it's blood out. <laughs> what's the link? Well? What's the link? It's like, link we're well. reviving this career. <laughs> My guy, what's, <laughs> what's the handle? What's I'm actually going to watch it. Yeah. I don't know why I haven't. So, I so how really? do we find it? What's, it? what's it? I've seen a few. Tell us. But like you were in, I think you were in like a house or something. You're doing a freestyle. You had an afro on. Mm. No, so that's different. That no, that's yeah. this like a proper, okay, hey, hey, I, it's not a proper hey, music hey. video because it's not something you would want to watch See, we have now. blushing. What's the link? Um, the title of the song is Roll It, oh, and it's by Mr. Mr. Fire. Fire. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can go. So I had to go blow it. I had to blow it out. So if they can do that in Africa, now imagine in, in America mm, yeah, where yeah, they are directly affected. <laughs> I'm trying to like put my mind. Roll on. it. Oh, hey. Hey. Can't imagine if I sing it, Roll It. What do you think the lyrics would be like? I'm singing it already. Roll it. You'll <laughs> <laughs> be rapping now. I know a rapper. <laughs> I want to roll. Uh huh. Uh -huh. You, you, you listen hey. now. Then you guys will probably give you a review. We are coming up. back on <laughs> the next episode to talk about this. Like, um, okay, but cool. Yeah, I mean, I agree with what both of you have said. Um, he deserves it, definitely. Um, having he, he represents a whole lot for the black community right now. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just fair to give that to them. Not exactly for Chadwick, but for what he represents yeah. um, for mm -hmm. them. So when they look at it, they can remember. And of course, hold on to that hope that he actually embodied and lived. You know? So I don't think that's, a, 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 that's something that should be really difficult to achieve. Um, but however, like you have said, also what they are, they are calling for the replacement mm -hmm. for can actually be taken to the museum. Mm -hmm. So maybe they they don't really want to forget their past because regardless of how horrible the past is, it's mm. also good to remember and understand that this happened at some point and yeah. why we don't want to go back to that point, you understand? So, mm. um, I mean, it makes sense. You've said it all. So. According to a new Forbes report detailing um, his rise from being poor as hell to rich and powerful, Tyler Perry is officially a billionaire. The breakdown of Forbes calculation shows Tyler is worth $320 million for his entire library of movies, um, TV shows, plays, and others, as he owns 100% of um, the content he has created, $300 million in cash and investment, $280 million for Tyler Perry Studios, um, which sits on a 330 acres in Georgia, $60 million for his equity stake in BET Plus, and $40 million in homes and toys. One thing that stood out for me was um, ownership. 100% ownership, yeah. Not just it doesn't mean ownership. Hundred percent ownership, yeah, you're correct. But ownership. I think ownership can't be quantified like um, when you start saying hundred when I say hundred percent ownership, yeah, you're quite right. You can, well, well I think what they mean hundred percent is because some people share the ownership. Like they say fifty percent between this person and Yeah, this person. so that's you're right. Hundred percent that's one thing that stood out for me. Um they said it's done series, right, of um, episodes of um, his shows, and he owns all of them. And he also gave a story when he did an interview with Forbes on how his father used to be a subcontractor and how he used to make $800 um, and the owner of the house would make 800000 and that was what instilled in him how to own his own stuff. So I think this is very important, seeing as much as you want to 
get into the limelight and you you should start considering that okay years down the line when i've made back the money will i still own some of this contents that i'm actually putting out there now so i think uh, your negotiation, your negotiating power too is very, very important. So I'm really proud of Tyler Perry and he's now in the same category as the people that even gave him a breakthrough such as Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey helped him a lot and he's a billionaire that's just like Oprah right mm. now and that's just amazing. So I think there's the saying of uh, we want the ones before us, I mean the ones after us to do better than the ones mm. before. I mean, yeah. I like the lessons you're pulling out from it, yeah. but then let's not turn it into a motivational speaking that will make people start aspiring to perspire to <laughs> something that is nothing. I still love the conversation regarding um, where people tend to let you know that it's okay to have 5% of a billion dollar investment than only 100% of something that will probably not become a success because you refuse to collaborate. Mm -hmm. So, and even in the sustainable development goal, one of um, what the champion, which is the number 17, is okay. partnership and collaborations is important. So yes, he's working for Tyler, and he owns 100% because he actually writes everything. Remember we had that conversation? So if he was going to outsource it and, I'm afraid to talk. you know, bring, what? See, which is why I'm afraid to talk because. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it depends on how you want to go about it. But shout out to Tyler Perry. He's doing amazingly well for himself and mm. for the culture. Um, he's, he's an inspiration for many and even for himself, he, he, mm. if, if I can say that myself. Yeah. So, um, shout out to him. He's 50 and a billionaire. So, he, he could take someone 30 years or 20 years, another person 50 years. So, there's a lot of lessons to pick from his life story of and just. Focus on your focus. The lesson me I picked out yeah. is that eh, sometimes it's not even about the quality of the stuff that you make because for me personally, I when when every time you maybe you should turn that to knowing that there's a market for every thank kind you. of and, thing and, you, that, make, you know yeah. today Tara, um, Terry said, Apala, yeah. Apala mentioned the same thing that it's not even if you sang bad if you had a great team um, yeah. for somebody who has such huge criticisms criticisms in the media industry in terms of his work being very um, either low budget or this and this and the story sometimes repeat itself and or being shot in seven days mm -hmm. all that type of stuff um has has not really changed the fact that you can still succeed now you look at somebody like that look at someone like like oprah like you mentioned who has put excellent work in in tv production mm. she's still on that same list so mm. i think the it's it beginning to show me that there's a, there's a lot of um components to making this success thing. definitely and it isn't just one thing i think about um what's her name kylie jenner a lot of the times i know I've, I've made my statement clear here several times i don't like what that babe stands for or mm. what it is that she's promoting think about her. but but no, i don't think about her you just uh, said it now yeah. <laughs> no i don't think about it so every time the, the thing comes up okay. i have to talk about it and i'm only talking about it because they're paying me to do so i wouldn't talk about it at home mm. but um either way I think she also has her own niche, so it's beginning to it begins to see more and more that it's it's almost it's almost irrelevant to criticize people because that thing that you want to criticize might be the exact yeah. thing it's just that like when you need an to actually upcoming go artist comes to you to say, "Listen to my song," and you listen to it, and you know it's rubbish. But that person can meet a billionaire that will pour money into promoting that like song, the and that person will blow. Yeah. So I feel like for me, what I took out of the, of the story, person, is that I don't really have an excuse as to saying that I don't want to because because that thing that I might be thinking might be the reason why. I shouldn't start something might be the exact thing that would be my niche like yeah. yeah so i mean i'm inspired by him i think one of the things that really stands out for me in terms of his content creation every time i always wonder why is this guy writing stories like this it's mad to me especially when it was all, all the things i represent for the black community and i realized that he's actually writing that because he was raised in that type of dramatic home. He's had women in his life that have gone through a lot of things. I feel like that for me is really, really inspiring that he's taking a lot of bad energy to make something really beautiful. So yeah. I'm happy for him. Welcome back, people. President Buhari approves November 1st as National Youth Day in Nigeria. Youths, oh yeah, gather around, gather around. This one is for you. I want to know how it makes you feel. What are you looking to achieve? I mean, this date is basically for you. Talk to me. Let me know in the comment sections. Most recently, evicted housemates Tolani Baj and Watoni were also in the building, guys. So please, take a look. Enjoy. Well, yeah. An interesting <laughs> day, Very actually. Interesting, like, yeah. My mind was on the last conversation and I remember, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. An interesting day. I wish I could spill the tea. But we're trying to be the bigger person, yeah. 
<laughs> that pun intended actually bigger person. Yeah. True. Okay. Uh, moving on to the conversation for this episode. President Muhammad Buhari approves November 1st as National Youth Day in Nigeria. Minister of Youth and Sports Development Sunday Diary midday announcement via Twitter. The National Youth Day will be a day to celebrate youths draw attention to and find solutions to um, the issues that affect the youth. Um, he went on to say Mr. President has again demonstrated his commitment to supporting youth-focused policies. Okay, so I saw this. I was impressed. I said, finally, we're beginning to have a voice. People are beginning to notice the youth. People are beginning to take us seriously. People are beginning to talk about what we do. Mm -hmm. People are beginning to have interest in our initiative. People mm -hmm. are beginning to have interest in our ideas. And um, I now saw the part of 75 billion naira budget. That's that is... not news now. Remember the essay to the Minister of Youth was on tea time and she talked yeah, about the I, I remember that. Yeah. yeah, and I remember that. So but another thing that got me worried mm -hmm. is that look even as bad as big brother mm -hmm. I, I said as bad sorry my bad as little as big brother before they call out the result they will tell you that this was put together by social -so company they will tell you the people who accumulated the vote and all of mm. that but in this case i was expected to see there's a 75 billion and there is a body that has been appointed and this this this, this person is and they will account for every cobble i did not see anywhere where if accountability man before he's buried no then the, the man shouldn't come and die before i understand his death the 75 <laughs> billion has not even said being disbursed yet i think the um opening is supposed to start in October or this month, I'm not quite sure, but mm. it's not started yet. And that's the one she was saying, go to noya.ng to get information. No that's noya.ng. No so the entry, you, yes, the funds are going to be made available, but mm. people have not started applying for it yet. So I think when the process starts, that you know the body that is the website, the body you can that visit is, the website. Yes, so it. visit the website and find out. You know, this is the problem. We make a lot of excuses <laughs> for a lot of people, and which is the reason why we do not get transparency because we do not expect it. If, 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 if this you're was trying another. To talk about other um, projects maybe that um, have have been executed uh, you know maybe we that's what I'm saying don't bury a man before the man but is you dead. know let well, us start on. burying them and holding them accountable so that they can know that we are serious then about just accountability. ask questions and not accuse them of not doing what is not gotten to the time when they are okay. supposed to do it anyways you know that's what I'm saying well that's fine that's I understand where you're coming Did you see from, the news of I'm the just... 774 j a thousand jobs the controversy I'm ongoing on that one so well. I'm yeah. wondering like but at the end of the day we need to talk about accountability we need to be tr more transparent with our funds yeah. we've mm -hmm. seen a lot of money that has been put into things that we did not see the effect or would not see the mm. impact of those mm. things I'm just hoping that this is not one of those things that I'm we will have well. we have a lot of youths in this country, I think we're even dominated by youths. And then you, you're now going to tell me that 10, 100 people, 10 to 100 people get the benefit of this initiative. And then you feel like you've done your job out of 75 billion. Were you giving yeah, out? Can't you be that way. Yeah. Can't be that way. I'm, 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 I'm just being saying. very optimistic about this one. I remember you asked her the same question on that day. Yeah. She said that um, one of the measures they're going to put in place is to ensure that the money leaves the coffers of the government straight to the entrepreneurs who win. I know that doesn't really rule out any shadiness, Corruption. right? But I mean, I'm hoping that there would there would be measures put in place to ensure that the funds get to the right people because 75 billion is not 75 million. <laughs> it's yeah. not even 75 naira. You are, you are going as far as not 75,000. So, um, I'm, I'm hopeful. 75,000 can change I, I like someone's that life. This National Youth Day, according to um, the Minister of Youth and Sport Development, is supposed to be that day where youths um, would. Um, I mean, you can come around and talk about what worries you on every sector from entertainment to um, judiciary to politics to sports to, I mean, every area that affects you, you, we can have that conversation and be sure that, yes, since you've called it the National Youth Day, you should be tuned in on every platform to be able to listen to what these people are going to um, cry out about or commend you for or expect from you. So I think it's a welcome development. And I'm is. hoping that from this 1st of November, all platforms and all youth will the voice would champion the right conversation and, and not just try to thank point you for fingers. Yeah, just have conversations that are critical and facts driven. 
Thank you for yeah. bringing that up because um, I've had a few conversations with a few people and I would say, okay, so what are some of the challenges you think the youth in Nigeria are facing? Mm -hmm. And they all keep saying, ah, the government, bad leadership. But no, that's not what we want to hear right now. Now, we, we don't expect you to come out. Let us come out with brilliant ideas, which mm -hmm. is why I think the youth should always should also send in a message to 0906000. 5719. Five, seven, ah, you're getting nine. better. All right. So just send, <laughs> send, send in your thoughts on what you think, what initiatives should be put in place for the youth since um, we now have the attention of President Muhammad Dubuari. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. Joining me right now is our studio guest. The full names are Tolani Shobajo, popularly known as Tolani Baj. She is an A&R specialist, a media personality, and a YouTuber who relocated to Nigeria in 2018 after nine years in the United States of America and started a career in showbiz. She lives in Lagos. She enjoys good vibes and originality. Welcome to the show, Badge. Thank you very much. And good vibes we shall be having, right? Okay, okuru. Okuru. I can't do that. Do it again. <laughs> okuru. Okay. All right. All right. So my first question for you would be, is it safe to say you had a thing for Neil? Um, I don't understand your question. Did you have a thing for Neil? Were you attracted to Neil? Was I attracted or did I have feelings? Which one? Did you have feelings for Neil? So to answer this question, I just want to kill the narrative. Um, never did I say that I have feelings for Neo. Mm. I just Ebuka said ne I just said Neo is a fine boy, which I'm sure a lot of people can agree with that. Is Neo not attractive? I wouldn't know. I, I know you know the answer, but it's okay. <laughs> Neo is attractive. Yeah. He's a fine boy. That's that. All right. Mm -hmm. So, in your opinion, what mistakes did you make, and what would you do differently if given a chance? Right. Um, now? I don't think I made any mistakes in the Big Brother house. I feel like I went in there to be myself. Um, you know, just to showcase Talani Badge to the world. All right. Is it a good idea for people that are aspiring to go into the Big Brother house mm -hmm. after the season mm -hmm. to have a relationship in the house? Is it a natural thing for people to have a relationship in the house or is it part of the game plan for um, most of you? So it, to answer your question, it's not a strategy. It's really whatever your heart desires. You don't really have to think about it too much because in the house, you're just living your normal life just as cameras are there. So if you're feeling somebody... I mean, I don't think what's wrong with giving the person attention back. If the person feels you back, you feel the person back. And then somehow, somehow, it can be a relationship. But it's whatever you want to do, really. So with Without Prince, was it, would you say it was genuine? Or it was, it just was genuine. It, it was, was genuine. genuine. We liked each other. All right. So mm -hmm. let's see how good you are with your current affairs. Um, I don't know about that. <laughs> that one, you can shake me there because I don't think I'm All right, Let's affairs. see how it goes. So the first one is, what is the motto of the Nigerian police? You're not nice. No, come on. It's yeah, easy. Nice. You know this thing. Oh. You know the it. police is your friend. Sharp girl. Okay. All right. So <laughs> what does the red eagle on the Nigerian coat of arms depict? Unity. Another chance? I don't know. It's excellence. Strength. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. All right. So way. how many continents are there in the world? I know, I know why you asked me this question. And no, not for that reason, actually. Seven. Yeah, you're correct. All right, so where is the Kanji Sorry, Dam in Nigeria located? She does not know. Talani does not know this one. Niger State. Niger State. What, mm. Can you repeat that question again so I where know? Where is the time. Kanji Dam in Nigeria located? Niger State. Okay, mm. word. All right, so which is the highest court of law in Nigeria? Supreme. Thank you very much for playing this game with us. That's the end? That's the ah, end thank of your <laughs> Yes. All right, thank so let's move on to Big Brother. A lot of people are yeah. of the opinion that you were very controlling in your relationship with Prince. Is that Tolani Badge in a relationship or um, that's Tolani Badge in a Big Brother house? So I think a lot of people are forgetting that just because we were we had a thing for each other in the house, it was, I, don't, I don't think I would call that a relationship. Yeah. Um, I just felt like we were each other's companion. Yeah. I do come off as a very dominant person. A lot of people find me intimidating and, you know, people are quick to call me rude and proud. Um, I wouldn't think I was controlling or I, I am controlling. I just feel like I'm very firm. And I know what I want. Rather than me being sad and down about what I like, you, I'll be vocal about it so you know how to adjust. So that was what. There reads more to come. And my studio guest right now is Watoni, a multi-talented single mother who juggles a fashion business and parenting blog. She speaks and writes Swahili fluently. Her real names are Florence Watoni Anyasi. She is 29 years of age, a creative artist who enjoys making fashion. And um, you're welcome to the show, Watoni. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm good. All right, Zay. All righty. I like your smile. <laughs> 
Thank you. All right. So a lot of people feel you drop the standard after settling into the house. Like, come on, look at you. You're blazing hot right now. When you came into the house, you were blazing hot. But you dropped the standard. Like, you felt at home and you were not dressing so fly. And, you know, what happened? First of all, all, all the girls in there were hot. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I dropped the standard. I love to dress simple mm -hmm. and just be comfortable in what I wear. Okay. So, no, I didn't drop the standard. So, to you, you didn't drop the standard. No, that I was didn't. just you being you. Yeah. All right. Well, so what's going on with you and Brighto? Was that hey. an act of desperation? You know, have to try and try and try and. Was that an act of desperation? Well, that was genuine. Um, the truth is, first of all, in the house, mm. almost everybody was getting booed up. And mm. that's fine. I feel like love is good. It's a good thing to love someone or want to be close to a particular person. So, there was Neil, there was V. And at Wathoni, it was hard to always be in Neo and V's space. Mm. So most people were getting coupled up, let me put it that way. So it was a situation where it's either you get close to, most times I was either talking to Tolani Badge or Tricky T. And then for Tricky T, it was like, we were done saying everything that we needed mm. to say. And then there's nothing more to say. So it was a situation whereby... I call it Tricky T, boring guy. No. <laughs> it, well, even with Tolani, we basically spoke about everything. And then we are people that get bored easily. Mm. So I decided to get close to someone. Or let's put it, I realized Brighto is the type of person that is very playful and I like to play a lot. So I started playing with him a lot. Yeah, we saw a lot of tickling. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got close. Honestly, my intention wasn't to be booed up. Mm. or to get attached or something because yeah i gave him all the energy and i know the energy wasn't kind of reciprocated and i really didn't bother about that i just wanted to be happy and have someone to talk to in the house and have fun that okay, was it so for me. it was all about the house because right now you're both outside the house what's the future for the both of you right now we are outside the house i'll see how it goes if he if he gives me back the same energy then there's potential are you guys you're tickly <laughs> <laughs> well, hmm. well, tell Let me us, spill the tea, comments. spill the tea. It's mm. not so ticklish anymore, is it? Kind of. Not so. All right, so what did you miss most about being outside when you were in the house? My son's voice saying, Mommy. Aww. And shopping with my best friend. So, yeah. All right. So, let's see how good you are with current affairs, right? Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So in Nigeria, democracy is now celebrated on... Hey. Is it 1st October? It's no. now celebrated on... Man, I don't know. June 12th. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So which is the most populated country in the world? Uh, Nigeria? No. What is it then? Second try. Huh. Hmm... This one is hard, though. Not so India? hard. India? No. You're close. If you remember coronavirus, you remember the country. Dubai? No. If you remember coronavirus... Okay, you China. Clap for yourself. <laughs> All I right. So. <laughs> I hate to say it, but that is a wrap on this episode. If you did enjoy these topics as much as I did, you can catch us on all of our episodes you have missed of Tea Time on our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. You can also catch the Tea Time crew live on Monday to Friday at 10.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. on DSTV Channel 48 across Africa. Once again, my name is Ifilmai. Thank you for watching. Adios.